guys uh, because of the weather we're gonna do a little bit different of a herping video today today is gonna be herping in your yard and obviously I could you know point out all the turtles and stuff uh, some of them are basking today you can even see the cooter basking down there but what I would rather do is let's see what we can find uh, that is not a turtle or not a pet uh, not something that's been rehomed here. Let's see if we can find something that's native that has chosen to live here, uh, kind of on my property, and uh, decided that this is the place that it wants to live at. So let's see what we can find today. All right, so just like when you go herping, flipping is always a good first option and a good place to start looking is underneath some things. So we've got a few things here we can kind of flip around. I like to look under these guys for salamanders. Let's see if there's any under here. Got a millipede of some kind. All right. So I know some of these rocks around this um, snapping turtle pond sometimes will have some frogs. Let's see. I'm gonna do this as gently as possible because I know that um, some of them are overwintering here and they are a little bit sensitive this time of year. So I'm just gonna kind of barely check some of these things. But so far, I have not seen anything yet. Tell you what, that uh, that's a happy cooter right there. Enjoying that sun after uh, overnights in the 20s, that probably feels pretty good. All right, I'll look around these rocks right here. Anything under these? Nope. Anything there? Nope. That's a nice big flat one. Red eared slider. Nothing yet. Got a big flip in this corner. Uh, nothing there. I'm really surprised. All right, rushing toward his pen. Let's see if there's anything under this log that's been in the sun. Got some non-native uh, hammerhead worms. I hate those things. So I'll cut a tortoise, enjoying the sun. Here, this is the uh, Gulf Coast box turtles. Let's see if there's anything hiding under here. This used to be my go-to spot for three-line salamanders. We'll see if they're underneath this, but they might have gone a bit deeper when I got cold, so put it back how they like it. We'll try this piece here. Nothing. Back. Got a nice piece right here. Anything under this? Nope. Everything has gone pretty deep. Let's try this back corner. I've got some stuff under this. Try this guy. Nope, nothing in here. Nothing there. Good size slimy. Awesome. Here we go. First uh, backyard herp of the day. Nice slimy salamander. Let's get him to a tub. And we'll get some more video and some photos of this guy. Nice, nice, nice. And they call them slimy salamanders. You can see. Like how it, it excretes. You can see it on the tail there. It excretes a liquid as a defense. Um, and it's pretty repulsive and disgusting. And I would also imagine it's probably foul tasting too if anything wanted to try and consume it. Um, but one of the neat things about salamanders and this particular group of salamanders is just how abundant they can be and readily found they can be uh, even in an urban environment. This group of salamanders is uh, from Plethodon and they would be like, you would find like slimies, redbacks, and um, these would be salamanders easily found in a backyard, especially if you have even a little bit of water, some woodland areas, areas of um, kind of decaying trees, logs, stuff like that. So pretty stoked, pretty stoked. I was able to find a, a backyard herb, and this is not something that I put here. This is something that, you know, likely lived here before I, I lived here or, maybe found its way here, decided it liked hanging around the outskirts of my property. So 
pretty cool. Pretty stoked on that. Might even shoot a photo of this. Um, haven't shot a photo of one of these guys in a while. Uh, always gets my cameras kind of gross, but um, they're so pretty. And then uh, when you shoot a photo of them, it really brings out some of the colors and tones that they have. Uh, so just an awesome salamander, really stoked. Uh, let's keep looking and see what else we can get. We'll put some damp leaves in here for this guy to keep his skin uh, moist and happy. We'll grab some just out of this kind of swampy water right here that the uh, Gulf Coast box turtles are in. And this will keep this guy's skin moist while we keep looking. All right, so we're gonna keep checking these bricks. Ooh, nice centipede. If you're into those kind of things, uh, that's pretty cool. Let's check the next brick. Another hammerhead worm. This one looks good because we've got this log over here. We'll see if we get anything here. Not a, like, looks like part of a blinker or something. Interesting over here. Got another there. Nothing. All right. Nope. A little, another little red centipede looking thing. Crazy. have my camera. We're gonna photograph this guy down by the aquascape pond, so I think that would be pretty cool. So let's uh, set this up. So shot the photos of this slimy salamander, and now we're gonna release it back where we found it, underneath his little special brick. And uh, just make a little nook right here to stick him. Take him carefully out of here, just gently. Here you go, buddy. There we go. He knows exactly where to go. We'll add some cover back to this. Kind of protect his little spot a little bit. There we go. Awesome, I couldn't be more stoked. Another thing you can do if you wanna be able to do a little bit of herping in your backyard is just find some flat pieces of you know wood. In this case, I'm using um, some of this um, non-wood siding. I uh, have some extra pieces from a section of the house that I did some you know new siding on. And uh, you can actually take this stuff and lay it out and it creates nice little uh, flips. You can go make your own flips and these are things that you can check uh, periodically and see what's hiding under them. So we're gonna take some of these and we're gonna kind of put them in the area that we found the slimy and then also at the base of some of these trees where I've seen some two-line salamanders. So I'm gonna put this a little bit right here like this, cover it with some leaves. Got another one. <clears throat> now these little salamanders are gonna run along the bases of these enclosures. So what I'm gonna do is put this little piece of wood right here so that they can run along this, but then also find this piece of wood and I can come and check on this periodically. All right, since everything likes water sources, we're gonna put some of these pieces uh, kind of in this periphery to the uh, alligator snapping turtle pond here. We're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna find a section where they would be running along the base put some little pieces in here, come back, cover them with plenty of leaves so that they're insulated. And another good thing you can do is layer them. So right here, I'm gonna take these pieces and kind of layer them like that, cover them. And then we'll take this piece and we will add it a little bit further upland and just right in here, get right into where it's moist and you can see all those little inverts right there. 
put this piece right here, come back, cover it with leaves, and maybe in a few weeks, I'll come back and check these after it rains and we get some variance in temperatures, see if anything's hiding under them, and it gives me some stuff I can always check. So anybody can harp at home, anybody can create, you know, some flips and some cover at home. So just some ideas I felt like sharing with you guys. So happy herping. All right, so I'm pretty stoked. Um, getting in this time of December, uh, getting one herp in my backyard is actually a pretty big deal. I'm pretty stoked on that. Normally in the spring and summer, I've got, you know, blue-tailed skinks, uh, three or four species of frogs and tree frogs in addition to the salamanders. But I'm really stoked uh, I was able to turn up that slimy salamander. And the whole point was is I wanted to show that, you know, even you at home, you can find, you know, herps in your backyard. It just takes a little bit of looking, knowing how to look, where, knowing where to look. Um, and you can also set out some artificial cover. Uh, you saw that that one was just underneath a brick, um, something, you know, totally man-made. So uh, everybody has the ability to do this, even in your own backyard. So hopefully uh, this helped inspire you. Thank you guys for watching this video. I'll catch you guys next time. And uh, I don't know, tagline here. <laughs>